Greetings everybody, this is Stormy with the capital Z. This time around we're going to be coming up a game between Lazy spawning as the green Nidal player on this map Turtle Rock. He will be going up against a very very uh, popular player on uh, Warcraft 3 Arena.net. The player's name is Kodos Forsaken. He is a very very popular old player. I mean I have seen a few of his games and he's pretty good. He's pretty good at what he does. So this is going to be Nidal versus Orc on Turtle Rock. Turtle Rock has a uh, Turtle Rock has given us some really really amazing games since the past few years, and uh, I'm just saying past few years. I mean <laughs> ever since the start of uh, Warcraft 3, I would have to say a lot of lot of rally spamming. I mean you guys just has you guys uh, just have to uh, bear with it. And uh, an interesting start over here. The the uh, orc player, sorry, orc player seems to be going for a uh, not very standard build. He's going for a war mill, and uh, we know something uh, different is coming. And the uh, knight player has the altar up. He's going for the DH and uh, AOW, who's pretty pretty standard build there by the uh, knight player. Although he's going for the green cam, going for a very very safer uh, thing to do. Both of the players very surprisingly not scouting out their uh, close spawn location, rather sending their uh, sending their workers to the opposite spawn location, and uh, they're gonna go, go over there and check up and see that there is nobody home. And uh, Blade Master coming up for the orc player. That's pretty standard, pretty standard choice. What I mean to say, and uh, let's see how this game turns out. Nidal player finally going to begin his creeping with by by uh, uprooting that. Uh, Ancient of uh, War, and uh, game game should get a uh, pretty interesting pretty pretty soon as the both of the heroes come out and uh, the game begins. We see uh, the orc peon coming inside the Nidal base, and uh, Nidal player not wasting time over there. And oh my goodness, I mean this AOW is uh, badly badly damaged. Maybe maybe worth it because AOW. I mean you can just heal it. It does regenerate. Uh, over time and you can just heal it by eating the tree so you're not losing anything to be very specific or if you're going for some uh, camping of his own creeping I would say not camping and uh, sorry I'm just referring to creeping as camping again again we seem we see some scouting around uh, done by both of the players having uh, their units scattered all over the map and uh, or player buying a circlet of nobility from the item shop he did get a one from the kill he kill I uh, the kill that he got. He's uh, supposed going for some more uh, creeping. While the Nidal player uh, attacks the under construction guard tower, he was managed he uh, he did manage to kill the guard tower. That was a that was a watchtower, I believe. It's called a watchtower. And the orc player killing off the uh, item giving ogre of the other side as well. I believe he got the class of attack plus 6 by this one and uh, he's gonna go for the defense, he's uh, running back to the base and you can see the you can see the DH retreating, uh, <laughs> why, why would I even say retreating, I mean I am I am a little bit lost for words right at the start of this game and uh, orc, what I mean to say was Nidal player was charging into the orc's base and he's gonna go for some, he's gonna go for some harassment and orc player pretty, uh, pretty Doing a really, really nice job. Oh, nicely done. Nice. I like that. I like that kind of micro. He, he, nearly, nearly killed uh, the DH. And uh, since he, the blade master does not have any mana at this point, he's gonna have to. He's gonna have to uh, leave the Nidal player be. No boost of speed on e either of the players. And uh, I believe this is the time that you can actually buy one. It is the first night. And uh, there's another boost of speed and uh, staff of teleportation, but uh, this is the TP which is the DH is using because uh, because he had he had no choice. Otherwise, he would had he would had uh, had to sacrifice his hero, leave it leave it to die, rather than spending that 350 350 item 350 gold item. Uh, Nidal player pretty successful in creeping out uh, two green camps with that AOW and just one archer. Pretty nicely done. I mean, multitasking pretty nicely done by Nidal player. 
Or player now uh, killing off the other ogre from this uh, orange camp and returning back to the base. Nile player has some uh, wisp uh, skeleton all around the orc player and he's gonna go inside and check up. Yep, he does see the watchtowers coming up. Orc player going for one more item giving uh, item giving creep from one uh, green camp. He's gonna pick up a slipper of agility. I guess I guess it's okay at this point. You may probably want to sell it off later on. Nile player uh, reaching tier two and buying a uh, buying a. a Naga Seavich from the tavern. He's gonna go after the Orc player. Orc player has to hide heal inside his base. He needs to he needs to stay behind those towers. And Orc player finally selling off his TP, getting that uh, one seven one seventy five gold. He's uh, uh, he did manage to kill off that archer. Nidal player could have shadow melded it and uh, saved it. I mean it is night time. One he lost one archer to his own mistake, I would say. And Orc player now going after the. Uh, I would try to say Nile player going after the burrow and Orc player massively repairing it with those peons. Now the Nile player finally going after peons and Orc player having a really, really nice, really, he, he's really good. Uh, as you can see, it was, it's so uh, nicely done that he but he uh, garrisoned the peons inside the burrow right when they were about to die and it's pretty good. It's really, really good and you can see that he... Uh, summoned the stronger worker outside for the repair and he got the weaker worker inside the garrison uh, burrow it's it's really good the orc player is doing very very well so far naga Sivich, uh has a bit of speed i'm not i'm not exactly sure when uh, when did he when did when did the night player did manage to buy that i mean we, we i mean i literally just saw that thing when it was already half halfway across the map and uh, near near the orc player for the attack and orc player managed to kill the naga Sivich using the hex and uh, hex and critical strike combination now the nail player probably want to go for some more uh, creeping he's gonna go for after the ogre magi this is a very very crucial item giving uh, camp this one uh, gives out one uh, one item and uh, the staff of uh, staff of uh, what's it's not a staff it's a watcher ward uh, staff of uh, sight I believe we used to call it for the normal one which uh, runs out basically it's a very very crucial item I have I mean I I I'm literally pointed that one out in every single game that I covered and ah, nicely done I'll player I'm going for a very very secret expansion over here right uh, over this uh, red camp at uh, the uh, two o'clock of this uh, two two o'clock position of this map he's going for some going for some nice uh, he's going for some really nice uh, uh, creeping over here at this uh, ogre at this uh, ogre merchant camp i mean you have uh, one thing attacking over there the other unit skeleton over here and really nicely done that's all i can say or clear back to the base uh he's gonna he has three circlets oh that's that's really jacked the blade master is literally jacked over there and uh nail player seems to be wanting to go for an expansion early on he does have uh dots in production he did he did uh, build the ancient of ancient of winds and uh okay or player this is this, this was the or player strategy he went for two beasteries uh straight up straight up went for two beasteries and now getting the wind riders wind riders can do uh really amazing actually against uh against the nile player especially with all those uh units having the unarmored uh, armor they take extra damage from siege and piercing attack and wind riders are wind riders can easily kite out uh these uh road of the talons if the nile player is not careful and what do you know another circlet of nobility i mean uh Orca should Okay, I was about to say Orc player uh, should uh, pass on the slipper of agility t to the uh, Shadow Hunter and then have all four all four circlet of nobilities for himself. And but that would have been an overkill. So he instead went for a balanced uh, army type. He went for and okay, nicely done. He's gonna tr he's gonna transform his uh, Druid of the Talon into the into the crow form and the crow form can attack the air aerial units 
Two forms can do some really good damage over the Erlune and it seems like the old player going for an expansion. Oh my goodness, this old player's old player's hero was down to like 10% of the hit point. It would have died over there. And Nidal player is nowhere near uh, over here. I mean, I don't see a lot of uh the old player is basically scouting with that uh wind rider, but I believe he did scout out <laughs> that area before going in there because Nidal player was pretty pretty close. I mean if he Nidal player was uh Nidal player would had been uh, near there, near that position and in position to jack it. I mean, that would have been really, really bad for the orc player. And uh, now the orc player actually wisely just hitting that archer and running off. That was the wiser choice because if he would have stayed back, uh, the Druid of the Talents could have put up that fairy fire for you and uh, fairy fire obviously can't reveal everywhere the blade master goes and that's that's never good for you as long as that fairy fire is up up uh, your up your head all right now we're gonna creep out the screen cam and old player old player old player is about to find out that he may end up losing these uh units and some bat riders under construction bat riders will do really well there you go why? Whoa, that was that was that was brutal. Wait, literally, I'm I'm just gonna take some time to explain what happened over there after this battle, and uh, I, uh, both of the both of the second hero of both of the players are down to uh, less than ten thousand of the hit points. Which one is gonna die first? Is it going to be the Naga Sea? Which is it going to be Shadow Hunter? Shadow Hunter lives. Shadow Hunter lives, and this one this one may just die. And okay, it did die. And. Okay, I, I have no idea. I, I have... What the hell did... What the hell did... I mean, I guess he used the wisps or... I don't know what he... What the hell did he do? Those turtles were not on at their camp. They were outside and they were kind of being used as distraction. So yeah, I'm gonna take some... I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause over here. So yeah, what happened over there was... Uh, when the battle was about to start between uh, the both of the armies Nidalf and Orc player the there was there was a one bat rider by the Orc player I just I said that okay he just got one bat rider and the bat rider went for the explosion the aerial explosion I, I'm not sure what that spell is called I'm really not sure but yeah it went for the aerial explosion and uh, the Nidalf player had three druid of the talons one of them was already in the crow form and the other two were not the Nidalf player went to transform them into aerial form and while they were transforming into aerial form they actually got damaged by that bad rider that was pretty sick uh, i guess i probably put up a replay or something like that over here of of that uh, particular scene all right anyways now the metal player retreating back to the base or player may just uh, be able to set up this expansion idol player already has an expansion ready hippogriffs uh, hippogriffs being uh, produced by idols they could be okay, I guess. They're not too bad. They can, uh, they should be able to attack bat riders, I guess. They should be able to attack the wind riders, which is, uh, which, which at least seems to be the primary unit for the orc player. Uh, both players are below 50 food, uh, very, uh, nicely maintaining their, maintaining their uh, economy. You don't want to you don't want to lose that very very useful income at uh, this point of the game. It's a very uh, very crucial point. Nidal player finally reaching 50 food. Uh, he needs to make sure he doesn't go over that. Uh, all right, we see a we see, we see a chimera root. Uh, Naga sea which is back. We see a chimera root by the uh, Nidal player. That's pretty good. If that's going to be pretty solid, that's going to be pretty pretty solid. So yeah, uh, okay, that's nice. Orc player got a Goblin Alchemist. You don't see these very usually. Let's see how the Orc player uh, uses uses this thing. And uh, yeah, I was about to say, I mean, you can get all the aerial units you want against the uh, bad fighters, but the bad fighters can. The difficulty, the, the thing is, the difficulty with the aerial units. Uh, it's difficult to control them as compared to controlling ground units i mean yeah it is 
any play, any player who has played Warcraft they can say that in a panda being picked up by the Nidal player and he's gonna go in there, charge into the base and he literally has no siege units. He's not gonna be able to do too much over here. He has those hippogriffs up there, but the hippogriffs can really dive very easily to these uh, towers, having the unarmored armor. Still, the orc players' uh, towers are auto attacking the DH. That's not all that good for the orc player. Orc player teeping back to the base, and the nile player forced to uh, go back a bit, cycloning up uh, the alchemist. Not, not really going to be all that useful. He got, he got a Cadgus pipe uh, that gives you what a brilliant Sora. Yeah, that gives you the equivalent of brilliant Sora actually. So let's see. Uh, now, Orc player uh, wanted to go out, wanted to go back to his main, but the Nilevir was in position to stop him, and ah, nicely done. If only, if only those uh, hippogriffs could attack that uh, that hero up in the air when it was uh, cycloned up into the air that is uh, we see here a few bat riders in uh, in production bat riders can really really tear apart those alien units and yeah that's I was, which I, the thing which i was talking about it's really not all that easy to control aerial units to micro them that is and uh, yeah see they are in a flock over here yeah this is the this is the main problem when they're in a flock like this and when you're up against an orc player with bat riders the bat rider can just uh, yeah we're, we're gonna see one scene over here we're gonna see one of one of what i all right the bat rider actually exploded on the hippogriff the single egg hippogriff it's a bit difficult to micro that and with the hippogriffs are in a flock like this they're, they're gonna die all together just one bat rider in there just one or two bat rider and that's it four hip hippogriffs dead that's not that's not really not really all that useful. Nile player probably should consider making something else sooner than later. And there, you, there it goes. There are one, two. Uh, I do believe two hippogriffs died in that uh, in that suicidal attack by the. And there goes all of the hippo hippogriffs. Or player lost all of the bats too. But yeah, because they're that's basically the only use of those those bat riders. They kill off all aerial units. Kodo Beast is he's, he's gonna die. I was about to say maybe he's gonna survive, but nah, he's gonna die. He tried to consume one of the druid of the Talons, but uh, died and it survived. It came out of its stomach somehow. Yeah, that one. Yeah. So both of the players actually have uh, their watch award, their respective side of the which. The watch award on the respective side of their bases. Finally, see a uh, chimera. Chimeras, uh, chimeras, chimeras. I guess they could do pretty well against these fortified uh, armored uh, watchtowers. Or player went for the upgrade, which uh, which make the armor fortified for these units, and that's pretty pretty brutal. Pretty brutal defense. So I mean, it's it's so good. It should have been a part of what a human player does. It should have been a part of the human player's tech tree. Or player going for the attack. Uh, gonna pound over these uh, moon wells. And there comes a chimera. And there goes a chimera. It's hexed and it's gonna die. It is literally gonna die. It is terrified. It is hexed and nicely done. As I said earlier, the, the wind riders can kite your alien units very well. All right, the ore player has actually crossed 50 food. I, uh, I didn't quite cover it at that point of time. Both of the players actually crossed uh, 50 food, and both of them are receiving like what 14 gold per second, I believe, uh, having two gold mines. It's okay, but yeah, in the long term, it's not going to be all that useful. Maintaining a 50 food army, I would say, yeah, that's always always useful. Or player now has three mysteries. Our gold mine is running low. Our gold mine is running low, and once that gold mine collapses, once that gold mine collapses, your income is only going to be seven gold yeah. gold per seven gold per second, and that's never good. So chimeras coming in. Chimeras do have that upgrade, and they're gonna launch right over the great hall. Great wall, 
is taking heavy damage. There come the Bat Riders. Bat Riders exploding right over the Chimeras. And Chimeras are down, baby. Chimeras are down. All that all that much gold down the drain. And okay, Nidal player says, haha, I had one more in the back. Nidal player going for creeping? I don't know. At this point, I would I would rather return to my base and try to save it. Try to kill off all I can from the Nidal player's army. But player doesn't seem to be in the mood of that he's he's over there creeping out a nice nice uh that's a starting location camp uh, i don't know what i don't know i need to work out some good good uh term for these okay or player has 50 on food 50 would have been better for him any any day that gold income is so so crucial and all right or player actually was going for a second expansion a third gold mine, a sneaky, sneaky gold mine would have been so useful for him. Seems like the Nidal player was scouting around. I do believe he has a hippogriff. Yep, he has a hippogriff. He's circling the map with the hippogriff. Nice, nice map awareness there by the Nidal player. And uh, here comes, <laughs> here are those uh, chimeras under construction, basically under under uh, training, training. I can't say under construction. They're under training. Yeah, the bat rider is. Being killed there by the batter, by the uh, hippogriff, and the hippogriff, hippogriff got caught, got caught into that trap. Or player now going for the expansion of the Nile player. The wisps are gonna detonate and uh, gonna cost the or player some crucial, crucial mana. And the hippogriff finally coming into play, doing some good deal of damage over the uh, wind riders. Or player gonna build a few more and he still has the Druid of the Talon. I mean, I had literally don't know where these things were all this time. And uh, he's, he didn't manage to kill it still. Managed, managed to TV back to his main and the main gold mine has collapsed. It is time to take up another expansion if this game is going to go even longer. And uh, there we, we can see some, we can see the Chimera attacking, attacking that uh, Great Hall. Now gonna be massively repaired by those peons. And here come the Wind Riders. Wind Riders are going to intercept. They're gonna try and do as maximum damage as possible. And the Orc player, Orc player the main hero having the uh, Lightning Orb. Lightning Orb, I mean, it is so deadly. I mean, the Orc player, oh wait, he lost the, go he, lost, he, lost, he lost the, Great Hall, Great Hall, he lost the Great Hall. <laughs> in the in the heat of battle, in that fray, he literally lost the Great Hall. And Orc player has no, Orc player has no income. Orc player has no income. Nidal player can take this game in the bag if he wins this battle, or at least gets the upper hand in the most of the part. Orc player is in a very very dire situation, and oh, nicely done, nicely done. Orc player managed to kill the main hero of the Nidal player. That is the DH and the Nidal player, Nidal player uh, kind of retreated back. Now I'm gonna try and attack uh, the Orc uh, heroes, but the Panda may die. Tower Preservation being used. He did have the Tower Preservation. He could have used it, could have definitely, definitely used it over the DH, and that would have been a game changer if the DH had survived. Well, let's see how this game still turns out. My uh, Orc player now seems to be wanting to go for an all-scale assault over the Nidal and no, he turned his attention towards the tower and I guess he kinda, I guess he kinda found out that the Nidal player may want to tower back his hero instead of actually revive it and yeah, this is one thing about the Chimeras because Chimeras can't attack aerial units, that's pretty pretty lame I guess, They're, them being two-headed dragons I mean they should be able to attack alien units and oh there's some there's some heat of heat going on over here one more hero died and uh, that's the third hero dying for the Nidal player I guess the Nidal player only has a uh, what does he have on the field he only has the DH on the field uh, we did see the panda die over there and the uh, Naga Siewich die and the blade master is, is under hex yeah, what I was saying about the Blade Master was that okay, he's gonna try and kill off the Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter is dead, all right, and he's now gonna try and go after the Chemical Raged uh, 
Alchemist, but the Alchemist managed to run away. And all oh, right, this is bad. This is really bad for the Nidal player. He is down to so low hit points. Oak player nearly at 50 mana. He's at 50 mana. He can win walk. He can win walk and kill that thing. Come on. Uh, wait, I think it's 75 mana. And oh, he still killed it. He still killed it. <laughs> that is bad for the Nidal player. Nidal player lost all three heroes. All three of them dead. One of them being revived over here. And the Orc player at this point has, uh, all right, a Tree of Eternity outside his base and a Tree of Life over here. I guess he wanted to go for another expansion, I guess. Uh, Nidal player still has the income. Orc player does not. I guess he may be doing some long distance mining, but that is not going to be helping him out as much as the Nidal player's economy. And uh, we finally see those slow, slow dragons heading into the... Heading into the expansion point of the old player, Tree of Eternity will live on. The Panda has been revived and the Naga Sea Witch has been revived. I do not see the Demon Hunter anywhere. Where is the Demon Hunter? It is not revived yet. Old player, old player may lose this battle, I guess, because he does not have the economy and the Nuddle player has two gold mines. One of them is about to expire, but the other one is still alive and kicking. He's getting 7 gold per second from this one, and uh, yeah, that's 14 gold per second until that gold mine collapses. He got the Great Hall up, alright. So yeah, finally he can get something done, but <laughs> there you go. Some really nice, nice long distance mining. Alright, he went for this gold mine instead of that one, because that one is obviously, obviously a bit longer, a bit uh, f further away compared to this one. Nidal player now going for some creeping at this point. I don't know. I don't think you that's what you should be going for. Uh, Orc player on the attack over the Tree of Eternity. It is going to be the Tree of Eternity versus the Blade Master. And let's see who wins. And some running interference by some Hippogriffs. And the Hippogriffs just fly away. Orc player, I guess the Orc player, they kind of signal that the Nidal player's army is near. So he backed off. Yeah, something which I was actually about to mention, I was trying to mention earlier is that Orc player with that Orb of Lightning on the Blade Master with critical with uh, critical hit level 3, you can you don't even have to uh, the Blade Master doesn't even have to chop that blade over jump and chop that blade over the dragons. He just has to stay far away with that orb of lightning and just shoot those lightning balls over all over those uh, aerial units, and that's so that's so brutal if you think about it. He does critical damage. He does so much, and it's really brutal. We did we did see a few chimeras being taken down at the early point of the game, and we see that again. That one poor poor crow being taken out, and we probably are heading into the last few moments of the game. All right, old player managed to kill the panda, panda, and uh, DH is alive. DH is alive and kicking. He's in this battle and going after the, going after the alchemist. And Nagasiwi is dead. Oh my! Old player is making a comeback. Old player is probably going to, old player is, may just probably win this battle over here. Old player has all three heroes up and ready. All three of them are ready for battle, and the metal player is about to lose his. There it goes, and that's GG. Lazy has left the game voluntarily. Awesome game. Well played by both players. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Stay subscribed for updates. Follow me on the social media. I'll be linking all of them in the description below. And probably somewhere on the video. I don't know. And I'm not sure if that's possible or not. Anyways, that's it. That's all. Z out. Bye-bye.